Well, thank you very much, Michael, uh, for your kind introduction. Uh, Mrs. Frances Moore, Chief Executive Officer of the International Federation of the Phonographic Industry, <coughs> representatives from IFPI national groups and uh, law enforcement, distinguished guests, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and a very warm welcome um, to Interpol's General Secretariat. I believe that for most of you this marks the very first uh, visit here and I hope you uh, enjoy it and that you will have a fruitful meeting. We of course feel honored that these premises have been chosen for hosting the annual conference of the global music industry. I sincerely hope the time spent at Interpol will be valuable for you, for all the participants and that our hospitality is to your liking. As the Secretary General of an organization representing law enforcement in 190 member countries, I can say with deep conviction that the matter under consideration by this forum is a gravely serious and also worrying one. Today, intellectual property theft permeates all industry sectors. The global economy is penalized with significant economic costs as a direct result of counterfeiting piracy and smuggling. While IP crime creates unfair competition for legitimate businesses, it is also undermines the government's regulations. It impacts development, inward investment, and it is a massive public health and safety concern. Unfortunately, this is no longer a new trend. Neither are the staggering statistics. This year, the global value of counterfeit goods is expected to exceed US dollar 1.7 trillion, according to International Chamber of Commerce. What is also not new are the linkages with terrorist activities. In fact, examples after examples prove as grim reminders of the underlying <coughs> painful reality. A decade ago, the 2004 Madrid bombings were linked with funds sourced from the sale of pirated CDs. Just over two months ago, the perpetrators of the attacks in Paris were alleged to have used counterfeit goods sales as one of the means to fund their actions. Global law enforcement needs to be focused on a wide spectrum of illicit trade, their supply chains, their funding mechanisms and cross-border linkages. Interpol targets transnational organized crimes that might be linked to terrorism, but are worth fighting in equally strong measure, even if no link to terrorism can be made. Interpol's trafficking in illicit goods and counterfeiting unit, led by Mr. Michael Ellis since June 2013, works to better serve our member countries in the global fight against IP crime. Our approach is structured around three pillars operations, trainings, and multi-sector exchange of knowledge, experience, and best practices, such as is happening here today. Interpol's trafficking in illicit goods and counterfeiting unit has conducted about 20 operations over the period of 2012 to 2014, involving 139 of our member countries. Overall, as a result of this effort, over 10,000 individuals have been arrested or are under investigation. The number of interventions have been over 22,000 with over 46 million goods seized. The combined value of these goods stands at over half a billion US dollar. Even as I speak, Maya 2, another Interpol operation directed at this crime area, is underway since 15th of March across 24 countries in the Americas. Alongside the results, our experiences convince us of how deeply embedded this growing menace is into the daily lives of citizens worldwide. Simply everything, from minerals and gemstones to medicines and chemicals, copyright and trademark infringing goods, digital files or books, music, films and software, human body parts, human beings, animals and parts of animals, timber, toys, illegal drugs, weapons of every description, tobacco and cigarettes is being traded illegally. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, everything, or more or less everything. The list of commodities and industries affected is endless, and even today alarming supply chains keep appearing. 
Such was too in a very recent case involving the seizure of 9,000 vials of snake venom, totaling 5 kilograms of the substance, when six individuals were arrested in Moldova. As per the Moldovian police, the venom was smuggled into Moldova all the way from <coughs> Afghanistan by a criminal group which was attempting to sell it for some euro 2.8 million. If sold through legitimate channels, that amount of snake venom could be well worth up to 5 million euro. To highlight how important battling crime in one part of the world can be to the other, I also want to highlight just one recent example that impacts the industry you represent today. In December 2014, the police in Vietnam raided a factory that produced over 3 million press discs every month. The firm had initially manufactured music CDs and DVDs, but had eventually moved on to making discs for pornographic material. Interestingly, the employees were from four different nationalities. The modus operandi included using private serial numbers known only to the owner. Case in point, millions of these discs were being manufactured with one key purpose, to be exported into developing countries. It is clear that on the road ahead, there is much work that waits us. In addition to operational support for the longer term, Interpol strongly believes training of personnel is fundamental to help curb IP crime. For example, the Interpol trafficking in illicit goods and counterfeiting team is working closely with the Chinese Ministry of Public Security for, for conducting annual capacity <coughs> building seminars. Trainings such as these are regularly held across all regions to identify how greater regional and international cooperation can be sought to better combat transnational illicit trade. Interpol also recognizes the part played by the internet and the incredible impact that illegal downloading has on the music industry. The industry faces many challenges and given your close association with Interpol through Michael Ellis and his team, we are well aware of the measures you are taking to counter them. We at Interpol recognize and value partnership with the private sector and the need for data exchange on to address this challenge as indicated by Michael in his introduction. We welcome <coughs> the prospect of closer partnership in regard to cybercrime, especially against illegal downloading botnets and file sharing platforms. In this regard, our new center for excellence, the Interpol Global Complex for Innovation in Singapore, will provide key technical expertise. This new facility will be opened next month. In addition, Interpol's online international IP crime investigators college has more than 7,400 registered learners representing all regions. Its 14 core modules are available in four Interpol languages in Arabic, English, French and Spanish and Mandarin and a number of industry specific modules are available online. Engagements have been made with the police training colleges around the world to include the online training in the official police training curriculum. An example is the Shanghai Police Training College. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I look back at the collective work done through international police cooperation since Interpol's General Assembly passed the resolution at its 69th session in the year 2000. It was to mandate the organization with combating international violations of intellectual property crime and rights. We have come a long way since then, but it is important to recognize that to continue the fight against counterfeiting and trafficking in illicit goods, Expertise and skills must be developed not only across borders and national law enforcement agencies, but truly across industries. In such times, the experience of organizations such as the International Federation of the Phonographic Industry and their association with partners across the globe becomes more valuable than ever. This valuable experience will be the need of the future with the resolve demonstrated by bringing un unity in thought and purpose from both sides, law enforcement and industry, I'm sure we are on the right path to eventually help us all make ours a safer world. Mrs. Moore, 
Distinguished participants, thank you very much for your kind attention and I wish you a very successful conference ahead and a nice day here in the city of Lyon. Thank you very much.